Welcome back, history enthusiasts and maritime adventurers. We have a riveting voyage prepared for you today as we delve into the extraordinary journey of the USS Sea Lion, a remarkable World War II submarine whose heroic exploits carved its name into the annals of naval warfare. Plunging into the tumultuous waters of the Pacific Theater, we'll explore the Sea Lion's story of courage, resilience, and her unique accomplishment in U.S. naval history. Prepare to dive deep into history and let's set sail on this thrilling exploration. USS Sea Lion, a Bilal-class submarine, was the second ship of the United States Navy to be named for the Sea Lion. She is sometimes referred to as Sea Lion II because her first skipper, Lieutenant Commander Eli Thomas Reich, was a veteran of the first Sea Lion, serving on her when she was lost at the beginning of World War II. Her keel was laid down on the 25th of February 1943 by the Electric Boat Company of Groton, Connecticut. She was launched on the 31st of October 1943, sponsored by Mrs. Emery S. Land, and commissioned on the 8th of March 1944. Following the shakedown, Sea Lion, assigned to Submarine Division 222, sailed for the Pacific and arrived at Pearl Harbor on the 17th of May 1944. Further training occupied the next three weeks, and on the 8th of June she headed west on her first war patrol. Sailing with Tang, she stopped off at Midway Atoll on the 12th of June, glanced off a whale on the 15th of June, and on the 22nd of June, transited Tokara Strait to enter the East China Sea. On the 23rd of June, she and Tang took up stations in the Osumi Islands, an island group to the south of Kyushu. That afternoon, Sea Lion unsuccessfully conducted her first attack, then underwent her first depth charging. On the 24th of June, Tenosa joined the two submarines, and the group moved northward to patrol the approaches to Sasebo. Patrolling in adjacent lanes, the submarines contacted a convoy on the 25th of June, but Sea Lion lost depth control on reaching attack position and was unable to fire. From the Sasebo area, the submarines moved toward the Korean Peninsula. On the 28th of June, Sea Lion caught and sank a Japanese naval transport Sansei Maru in the Tsushima Island area, then continued on into the Korean archipelago. On the 30th of June, she used her deck guns to sink a sampan, and with the new month, July, she moved closer to the China coast to patrol the approaches to Shanghai. On the morning of the 6th of July, Sea Lion intercepted a convoy south of the Four Sisters Islands and at 0447 commenced firing torpedoes at two merchantmen in the formation. Within minutes, Setsuzan Maru sank and the convoy scattered. Sea Lion retired to the northeast to evade the convoy's escort, a destroyer, as it began its search for the submarine. At 0600, the destroyer closed Sea Lion and the submarine launched four torpedoes at the warship all missed. An hour later, enemy aircraft joined the search which was continued until mid-afternoon and Sea Lion escaped unscathed. Three days later, Sea Lion moved northward again and commenced hunting between the Shantung Peninsula and Korea. Dense fog blanketed the area and left her blind while her radar was out of commission. By midnight on the night of 10 the 11th of July, however, her radar was back in partial operation and on the morning of the 11th of July, she conducted several attacks, sinking two freighters, Tsukushi Maru No. 2 and Taiyan Maru No. 2. The running surface chase with the second freighter involved three attacks over a period of almost seven hours. On the third attack, at 0711, Sea Lion fired her last torpedo. Then, after debris from the explosion had flown over the submarine, she moved down the port quarter of the target, pouring 20 mm shells into the Japanese bridge. At 0714, the freighter disappeared and Sea Lion headed south of Tokara Strait. On the 13th of July, she cleared that strait, and on the 21st of July, she arrived at Midway Island. Refitted by Fulton, Sea Lion departed for the Bashi Channel and her second war patrol on the 17th of August. Hunting with Growler and Pampanito, she transited the channel and moved into the South China Sea on the 30th of August. During the pre-dawn hours of the 31st of August, she conducted a night surface attack against a Japanese convoy and heavily damaged a tanker. As Riko Maru billowed black smoke, other Japanese ships took Sea Lion under fire with deck guns. The submarine moved out of the area and executed an end around to take position ahead of the convoy. At 0720, she again attacked the convoy. Within minutes, Shiratika went down. Enemy planes began circling the area and the convoy's surface escorts began their search. Sea Lion went deep and headed south. Later that day, she closed another target with a merchant ship appearance, 
but as she reached firing position, the target was made out to be an anti-submarine vessel. Three torpedoes were fired, but were spotted by the target's bow lookout. The target evaded the torpedoes and the hunter became the hunted. Depth charging followed without damage to the submarine, but Sea Lion, low on fuel and torpedoes, headed for Saipan. There, the submarine rearmed and refueled. On the 7th of September, Sea Lion got underway to rejoin her attack group. On the 10th of September, she moved through Balintang Channel. On the 11th of September, she rendezvoused with two other submarines, and on the 12th of September, the group attacked and decimated a convoy en route to Formosa. This was achieved through American codebreakers deciphering a coded message. The convoy carried Australian and British POWs from the infamous Thai Burma Railway. At about 0200, Growler attacked the formation. Pampanito and Sea Lion followed suit. Growler's torpedoes sent Shikinami to the bottom. Sea Lion launched two torpedoes, both misses, and was taken under fire by two of the escorts. The submarine went to top speed and managed to keep ahead of the escorts until they broke off to rejoin the convoy shortly before 0330. An hour and a half later, Sea Lion again closed the convoy. At 0522, she launched three torpedoes at a tanker, then swung to fire on SS Rakuyo Maru, the last ship in the nearer column. At 0524, Zuiho Maru, possibly hit by torpedoes from both Pampanito and Sea Lion, burst into flames. Kachidoki Maru was disabled. She swung into the burning tanker and soon was also ablaze. Sea Lion's second target was illuminated, and at 0525, she fired on Rakuyo Maru. Both torpedoes hit, and that ship began to burn. The sinking of the SS Rakuyo Maru and SS Kachidoki Maru resulted in the death of nearly 1,200 Australian and British prisoners of war. Sea Lion was then forced to go deep. After several attempts to get a better look at the scene, she cleared the area and started after the remainder of the convoy. On the morning of the 15th of September, the three submarines reformed their scouting line. That afternoon, Pampanito radioed Sea Lion and other submarines in the area to return to the scene of the action on the 12th of September. Rakuyo Maru had been carrying Australian and British prisoners of war, 1,159 of whom were killed in the attack, or by the effects of the attack. By 2045, Sea Lion had taken on 54 POWs and started back to Saipan. All of the POWs were coated with crude oil and all were in poor health suffering from malaria, malnutritional diseases such as pellagra and beriberi and exposure. Three died before the submarine reached Balintang Channel on the 17th of September. On the 18th of September, Case rendezvoused with Sea Lion and transferred a doctor and a pharmacist's mate to the submarine. On the 19th of September, a fourth POW died, and on the 20th of September, Sea Lion arrived in Tanapag Harbor and transferred the surviving 50 rescued POWs to the Army Hospital there. The movie Return from the River Kwai was based on the events of the attack, but was never released in the United States. Most information on the attack is brushed over with little or no information on the facts that the attack was ordered by U.S. command and carried out by U.S. submarines and killed so many Allied prisoners. From Saipan, Sea Lion returned to Hawaii. Arriving at Pearl Harbor on the 30th of September, she departed again on the 31st of October and with Keat, headed west to patrol in the East China Sea. The two submarines stopped off at Midway Island on the 4th of November, then continued on to their patrol area. Ten days later, Sea Lion transited Tokara Strait. On the 16th of November, her number 8 tube was accidentally fired with both doors closed. Heavy seas prevented a thorough inspection of the damage. On the 17th of November, she began patrolling the approaches to Shanghai. On the 18th of November, there was a hydrogen explosion in the battery space of the torpedo in number 5 tube. In the early morning of November 21st, 1944, precisely 20 minutes past midnight, the USS Sea Lion detected a fleet of Japanese naval vessels via radar in the Taiwan Strait. The Japanese vessels were not following a zigzag path as a defensive measure against submarine attacks which prompted the commander of the Sea Lion to explore the potential for a surprise attack. By the time it was 0148, the crew of the Sea Lion had concluded that they were trailing what appeared to be two battleships and two cruisers, escorted by three destroyers. However, they had unwittingly encountered a significantly more powerful group, three battleships, Yamato, known as one of the most formidable battleships ever constructed, Congo and Nagato, accompanied by the cruiser Yahagi and three destroyer ships. 
Seeing the valuable chance for an assault, the USS Sea Lion's leader, Lieutenant Commander Eli Thomas Reich, called for the crew to man their battle stations and gear up for an impending attack. Upon the detection of the Japanese naval group and subsequent call to battle stations by Reich, one crew member had the presence of mind to set up a film recorder. This device, left behind by a CBS war correspondent, was strategically positioned near an intercom speaker in the submarine's conning tower. The captured audio from this momentous event provides a uniquely vivid and authentic glimpse into the audible experience of a submarine attack during the period of World War II. Assuming that the first and last vessels in the lineup were cruisers and the two in between were battleships, the U.S. submarine elected to strike at the battleships. The placement of two out of the three destroyers near these central vessels further heightened the chance of striking them with a torpedo if the primary targets were missed. At 0256, the Sea Lion discharged six torpedoes from its front torpedo tubes aimed at the first target. Three minutes subsequent to this, the submarine released three additional torpedoes from its rear tubes targeting the second vessel. The Sea Lion's crew reported that three torpedoes from the initial assault hit the first target, which turned out to be the Congo battleship. One crew member's comment was recorded stating, three hits to the Japanese B, that'll put them in dry dock at least. The second batch of torpedoes missed the Nagato battleship, but one torpedo managed to hit the Urakaze destroyer, causing an explosion and sinking the vessel with all its crew on board. An audible cheer from a Sea Lion crew member can be heard in the recording. Believing that they had merely scraped the Congo's armor since it continued to move, the Sea Lion momentarily backed off to reload its torpedo tubes. The Japanese fleet persisted in their course, dropping depth charges inaccurately, much to Sea Lion's crew relief. The Congo began to slow down, and along with the remaining destroyers, it eventually diverged from the rest of the fleet. The Sea Lion was preparing for another assault on the weakened battleship when a crew member noticed an unexpected development and exclaimed, Wait a minute, something's happening over there. The Congo had suffered more extensive damage than originally anticipated. At 0524, it exploded, eliciting cheers from Sea Lion's crew. Approximately 1,200 of the Congo's crew members, including its captain and the commander of the 3rd Battleship Division, perished with the ship. This event marked the Sea Lion as the only Allied submarine to have successfully sunk an enemy battleship during the course of World War II. By the end of her third war patrol, Sea Lion had sunk at least 13 ships, 6 tankers, 5 freighters, 1 destroyer, and 1 battleship. On her fourth war patrol from the 14th of December 1944, the 24th of January 1945, Sea Lion returned to the South China Sea in a coordinated attack group with sister ships Blenny and Cayman. Poor weather plagued her, and of the 26 days spent on station, all but six were spent on the surface. On the 20th of December, she sighted a supply ship escorted by a destroyer through her high periscope, and at 1937 fired six torpedoes at the supply ship for four hits. The submarine then evaded the escort, reloaded, and waited. Two and one half hours later, Mamiya was still afloat, and the submarine went in for a second attack. At 32 minutes past midnight on the 21st of December, she launched three torpedoes for two hits. The supply ship went under. That day, Sea Lion joined the 7th Fleet, and from the 28th of December 1944 to the 14th of January 1945, she performed reconnaissance duties in support of the reoccupation of the Philippine Islands. On the latter date, she cleared her patrol area and headed for Western Australia, arriving at Fremantle on the 24th of January. She departed Fremantle on her fifth war patrol on the 19th of February. Again operating in a coordinated attack group, she returned to the South China Sea, then proceeded into the Gulf of Siam. In the pre-dawn darkness of the 17th of March, she torpedoed and sank Samui, and on the 2nd of April, she rescued an army aviator who had been drifting in a rubber raft for 23 days. That same day, three more downed aviators were transferred to her from Guavina, and on the 6th of April, she delivered her passengers to Subic Bay. By the 30th of April, Sea Lion was again ready for sea. With Bayshaw and Hammerhead, she departed Subic Bay for the northern part of the South China Sea. Through May, she patrolled off Hong Kong and provided lifeguard services for strikes against Formosa. At the end of the month, she received downed aviators from Bream and transported them back to Subic. Then with passengers bound for Hawaii, she sailed east. 
On the 12th of June, she arrived at Guam, whence she proceeded to a lifeguard station off Wake Island, and on the 30th of June, she cleared that area for Pearl Harbor. From Pearl Harbor, Sea Lion continued on to San Francisco, California, where she was undergoing overhaul at the end of the war. With the cessation of hostilities, inactivation preparations were added to the overhaul, and on the 2nd of February 1946, the submarine, which had been awarded the Presidential Unit Citation for her six war patrols, was decommissioned. A year and a half later, however, Sea Lion, along with Perch, was designated for conversion to a troop carrier, and in April 1948 she entered the San Francisco Naval Shipyard for the eight months conversion. During that period, her torpedo tubes and forward engines were removed, and her forward engine room and forward and after torpedo rooms were converted to berth 123 troops. The forward engine room and after torpedo room were designed for alternative use as cargo space. The wardroom was redesigned for use as an operating room. The beam aft of the conning tower was extended, and a large watertight cylindrical chamber was installed abaft the conning tower to store amphibious landing equipment, including a tracked landing vehicle. On the 2nd of November 1948, Sea Lion was recommissioned a submarine transport with the hull classification symbol SSP-315. Training exercises off the Southern California coast with Marines embarked took her into the spring of 1949 when she was ordered to the Atlantic for duty in Subdiv 21. During April, she operated in the New London, Connecticut area, then in May, she commenced operations out of Norfolk, Virginia, as a unit of Submarine Squadron 6, Subdiv 61. On the 31st of January 1950, she was reclassified a transport submarine with hull classification symbol ASSP 315, and by the spring of that year had conducted exercises as far north as Labrador and as far south as the Southern Caribbean. From April to June 1950, she underwent her first post-conversion overhaul at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, and in July, she resumed operations out of Norfolk. Sea Lion was reassigned to Subdiv 63 in March 1955 and tested helicopter operations in 1956. She was reclassified submarine transport APS 315 on the 24th of October 1956. Sea Lion continued a schedule of exercises with Marines, underwater demolition teams, and beach jumper units, and on occasion, Army units, off the Virginia and Carolina coasts and in the Caribbean until 1960. During that time, interruptions came only for overhaul periods, during one of which the LVT hangar abaft the conning tower was removed and for one deployment with the 6th Fleet in the Mediterranean from August-November 1957. On the 30th of June 1960, Sea Lion was decommissioned at Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where she remained as a reserve training submarine until reactivated a year later. In August 1961, she was towed to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for overhaul. On the 20th of October, she was recommissioned, and on the 18th of December, she rejoined Sobron 6 at Norfolk. There, she resumed a schedule similar to that of the 1950s, interrupted by regular overhauls, and in the fall of 1962, to support the blockade put into effect during the Cuban Missile Crisis. On the 22nd of October 1962, she departed Norfolk on what was to be a month-long training cruise in the Caribbean, but the formation of the blockade force altered the cruise plans. On the 3rd of December, she returned to Norfolk, and from then into 1967, she maintained her schedule of exercises with Marine Reconnaissance, Underwater Demolition Teams, and SEAL personnel. On the 15th of September 1967, she changed home ports and administrative control, and for the next two years, she operated out of Key West, Florida, as a unit of Subdiv 121. Reclassified an amphibious transport submarine with hull classification symbol LPSS 315 in January 1969, Sea Lion was ordered inactivated the following summer, and in September, she proceeded to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where she was decommissioned and placed in the inactive fleet on the 20th of February 1970. Stricken from the Naval Vessel Register on the 15th of March 1977, Sea Lion was sunk as a target off Newport, Rhode Island on the 8th of July, 1978. But she will be remembered as having one of the greatest accomplishments in American submarine history. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.